Hi everybody. Um, doing a video yesterday to show my friend Miss May how to use her Lamy for the first time actually made me feel good um, despite having COVID. So I decided that today I would try to do another video. And one video that's been on my heart and on my mind for a little while is something that I hear a lot of journalers talk about and it's sort of taboo what to do or how to feel about when you don't want to finish a journal. <clears throat> Let me share something with you. This is my This is my stack. This is not all of my journals from 2021. That will be another video in and of itself. But from 2021 starting with the, the last video that I recorded of uh, reviewing a journal was the Endless Recorder where the Tomo River, blank Tomo River pages and whatnot, and I did not finish it. As you can see, I mark where I stop with this just piece of white paper. So as I talked about it in that video, I just didn't mesh well with this uh, notebook and so I abandoned it just about halfway. These right here are my other abandons and let me tell you why and how I feel about that. We journalers, we journal for many different reasons. Some journal to keep track of health, some journal to keep track of the weather, some yeah that's a thing. Some journal to you know, just record important and insightful thoughts and memories and things that they want to pass on to the next generation or onto their kids. Some people are extremely prolific and they just journal, you know, these just poetic pages of awesomeness. And then you have people like me and I journal a bunch of piss and vinegar because this is what's in me. Pardon the expression. That's actually, I believe, an Irish expression, but it's so funny. I grew up my whole life being told I was Irish. However, Ancestry.com told me I was Welsh, so I kind of lived a lie my whole life, and I'm still not sure how I feel about that. But back to journaling. I fill my journals with everything that happens throughout the day and not just happenings. I chronicle funny things that were said, things that I want to remember, things that I tend to forget. Um, I will actually read you a few, you know, pieces of my journal that kind of show what I journal about. Sometimes I'll decorate in my journals, but not a lot. My journals are primarily writing. So in here, let's see, yes, it makes that sound. Do you hear the thunder outside? I like it, the thunder. But here again, you'll see that little white page there, a little white bookmark that shows that I abandoned this journal. Sometimes I'll even write up there, abandoned. <clears throat> Sometimes I pop on my typewriter and I type up little things and then I put them in my journal with like a matching picture and then I just write about, you know, woke up this morning to my getting, coming into the room and getting ready for work and it was a good time for me to wake up, have coffee and start the day. Eileen woke up soon after and we had some Eileen and mom time on the couch this morning cuddling. Maybe we'll go to Catfish Cove today for the leaf exercise. I don't know yet. I've noticed that the blue ink that was in here previously is still tinting pink. I've got so much to do today. The downstairs is so sloppy. This is actually very interesting that I turned to this page. I didn't remember writing this, but I kind of tipped this page in here. <clears throat> I'm not really sure why I feel the desire to write everything down just as it comes out of my head. I log and record all my thoughts each day, and I'm still not 100% sure why I do any of this. Why do I write the drivel in my brain just as it is? Why not try and capture more meaningful journal entries and take greater care with what I write? I could simply choose more literary sound. 
I could cho simply choose more literary sound or sophisticated ways to speak. I think I was trying to say more little rarer. Like, I don't know what I was trying to say. I could pause and take moments to organize my thoughts, but I don't. I just write it as I think it, good or bad. I don't know whether I'm writing these journals for someone else or just for myself. I don't know whether I'll choose to just bury them somewhere when I get to a certain amount or I'll donate them to the Journal Museum in England or I'll burn them or have myself cremated with them. <clears throat> that unknown factor sort of makes my journaling vibe fluctuate over time. I write geared towards whomever will read this years from now or I write with myself as the only reader in mind. Or I write knowing that this will never be read by anyone else as long as I live. I wonder how one goes about donating their journals to the Journal Museum in England. What is done with the journals? Who reads them? Or do they just sit on shelves forevermore after they've arrived? Do I even care? Well, yes, a bit. What if I do end up doing really well in my writing career? I don't want my journals made public while I'm alive and anyone could have access to my nonsense. And it really is all complete nonsense. It's my nonsense, but it's nonsense all the same. So I just wrote this on another sheet of paper, I guess, finishing my thought from that day when I didn't have my journal right in front of me, which is actually really odd. I take my journals with me from room to room to room. If I get up and I go to another room, my journal and my pen, usually my whole pen pouch and my little journaling bag is always with me. This was a cheapo uh, journal that I got from Walmart because I, I watch some videos like I watched the journal CEO and she has like a bazillion and 11 to 12 journals that she writes in and I'm like I want a bazillion and 11 to 12 journals I just don't want to pay $20 for all of them because they're found in pin friendly so I was like okay well I'm just gonna get a random journal from Walmart and see how that works too well ooh, I'm losing things here um, so I abandoned this journal not because I didn't like the paper because the paper was actually really good. It's a pen and cloth, pen and gear cloth journal, which is on my little list to review because I was pleasantly surprised, but I don't really know why I abandoned it. So I'm going to have to go back in there and research why I started being okay with abandoning a journal that I didn't feel like I meshed with at about volume 22. So I've been an active journaler, journaling every day for hours a day, starting, not hours a day, but like all day long since um, June of 2019. And so, is that right? Yes, that's right. June of 2019. And so I keep a log a record of all my journals, you know, one through whatever journal <clears throat> I happen to be on. My current journal is number 35. So I started being okay with abandoning journals and I don't, I feel so bad that I abandoned a journal with Tomo River paper in it. So I actually, even though I abandoned it, sometimes I come in here and I will take out pages because it is Tomo River paper and I like using it for other things like um, pen pal writing or maybe I want to type something you know up on something and then put it in another journal so I try to use up the pages that are in each journal that I abandon in different ways I guess I just kind of got bored of it sometimes if I know I have another journal coming up that you know I'm excited about and that maybe I want to review later on, then I'll get bored and I'll jump out of one. So why do we do this? Why do we have journals that we abandon? Well, when you have a whole bunch of journals sitting on your, your shelf and you get start getting to the end of a journal and you're like, oh, I can't wait to get into that new journal. Sometimes you'll tell yourself reasons or you'll give yourself an excuse. Oh, I'm bored with this journal or oh, this journal, it's not making my favorite pen ink look great anymore. So I'm just going to go into my new one. And you know what? That's not a bad thing. I used to be so uptight about not wasting any of the paper in any of my journals that I would force myself to finish journals that I really didn't like. And so I realized after a while, like, why am I doing that? Again, 
use the pages that you've abandoned for different art projects and then you can put those in different notebooks. This was one of the Artist Loft Notebooks number two from Michaels that was supposed to be more fountain pen friendly. And indeed it was. Again, this is one of those that I will review. So. And I abandoned it page 153, but again, as you can see, I've been pulling out pages and reusing them for different things. And so I don't really feel bad about abandoning journals. And at first, oh, hey, I've been looking for that. Oh, I've been looking for my, I keep a list of all the, the books that I read during the year. Jack, kitty, get away from the tripod. Oh. So I have all my books from 2020 that I read and I've been looking for this. Okay, great. So I left it in this notebook in July. That's why my list is so small. This is my completed books of 2021. And there's quite a bit more than that. I just lost the paper. Ah, that's why you should go book through your old genres every once in a while. It's a good tip right there. But that's one of the things I like about journaling too, is that I can always look back through these pages and tell exactly where I was. And this is another thing that I like to do is I save like craft paper, um, packing paper, and then I'll like crumple, 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 crumple it up really, really, really good and like flatten it out and then do it again. And that kind of releases the, the stiffness of it. So it's more pliable and then I'll type on it and then I'll, you know, put it somewhere. But I abandoned, if you look, I abandoned this journal just over, just over halfway in, and this is an exceed journal. And once again, I abandoned it just because I got tired of the, of the cream colored pages. If there's the only problem I have with exceed journals is just those darn cream colored pages. If they would make white, or ivory colored pages, I think I would probably, yeah, I would just die of have happiness, journal happiness. Okay, the last one for 2020 that I abandoned, this was actually a journal from Target and it was one complete journal. And I thought, what the hey, I'm gonna try it out. So I bought it and the pages were not fountain print friendly, but I tried really hard and I was like, no, I'm not going to, to abandon this journal like I've abandoned all the others. And then I abandoned it. So it turned into volume 24. And some of these, I like colored the side of them. I don't know why. What was that for? What did I do that for? sure it's in here somewhere it'll tell me why I don't know that's really weird why would I do I have noticed that I've uh, added a lot of different candy wrappers in here interesting was going through a lot of kit oh look oh this is when we first got squishy Oh, Squishy is over there sitting on the couch now. She's almost a year old and she's so squishy. See, isn't that fun? Like when you go through your old journals and you find little things that you, you didn't remember that day. Yeah, I just ripped that out and I'm gonna put it in my other journal. Yeah. So basically like the, so as you can see, I have abandoned journals. I think everybody has abandoned journals sitting on their journal shelf. And my main point is that for whatever reason that we abandon journals, don't feel bad about it. Don't feel guilty. You're not wasting the paper. You've purchased that paper. And if you really feel that badly about it, do what I do and go back in there every once in a while and the ones you've abandoned and rip out some of those pages and use them for different crafts or different things like that. I've even taken a couple and I ripped out a certain amount of pages and then I like, I'll show you what I did, hold on. 
This is my ink cabinet of wonders. In another notebook that I abandoned that was Tomo River paper, I took out a whole bunch of pages and I folded them over and I sewed them. Can you see my sewing? And I added a piece of cardstock to the front and back. And once I'm done with my current ink and pen log, this will be my new one. And it's small, it's A6 sized, and I made it myself by using pages from a journal that I abandoned. So you can do that. Um, yeah, that's kind of just what I wanted to say. Don't feel bad, don't feel guilty. If you must, think of new ways to repurpose those pages. But also don't feel bad about just, you know, not even worrying about it. We all have things that we have abandoned and it doesn't make you any less of a journaler, any less of a dedicated journaler. It doesn't make you any less, is what I'm just trying to say. So I hope you enjoyed this little pep me up. Um, there's a couple journals here that I have featured that I'll be doing reviews on very soon, so keep an eye out. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave me a like, a subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Let me know if this if this video was just like drivel and you're like, Claire, we're waiting for the good stuff. Or if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate knowing that too. Um, give me some other ideas of videos that you'd like to see soon. And I will make a list because I like making lists. And I will get back to you with those videos. So please take care. Bye.